I'm reminding you that it's time for nine o'clock coffee. Pop, 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 pods. Time for nine o'clock coffee morning, guys. It's the 12th of May. International Chronic Fatigue Syndrome Awareness Day. It kind of tuckered me out just saying that. Uh, coming up later, um, Night Night Sun. That's nutty, buddy. Stamp Champs. A little bird, he told me. Uh, do they know about second breakfast? Training it up. And uh, don't be a meathead, be a fathead. And finally, only a fool would say that. Kind of you guys that went to see. Um, oh shoot! Add the name thing again. Um, Shoot, it was a band, it was one of my favorite bands. I can't remember the name. Oh well, come up later. You know who sing the, the song that sung by the, only a fool would say that song was sung by Steely Dan. Steely Dan. Okay, check my later for links in the description after the stream is over. It's about stuff I'm passionate about, alternate health, humor, science, and God and you guys. Uh, don't talk about politics and the stuff about God is at the end so if that bugs you because it's a hot day if that bugs you then it's time to get out the fly swatter here's an app for that um I, you know I, I have been thinking about doing uh apps for just the phone but this last week i decided that i need to do other stuff too so because there's just so much out there man it's uh, and the thing i'm going to do today is roku roku's not really software it's really a piece of hardware but there's something really cool about a Roku. Uh, it's, it's used for uh, watching TV off the internet. So it's a good way to get off of the cable box and get on to some free television because there are a lot of channels that you can watch um, that are free for the Roku. And some of the things that I have with my Roku, Tabo, Tabo is, uh, this thing's pausing. Tabo is another piece of hardware that you can get that allows you to get digital TV over the air and actually schedule schedule it, schedule recordings of over the air television. So it's kind of it's kind of like a DVR for over the air digital television. And if you get a big enough hard drive, man, you can put a lot of shows on there. Like right, like right now, I got all the Maverick shows. One of my TV favorite TV shows, Maverick. Um, I did have. Uh, uh, Kung Fu, I used to like that a lot. But they, if you can get these, these stations over the air, you can record it. So as tableaus, you can use that with your Roku. Also, you can use Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime, Sling. I don't know if you guys know about Sling, but Sling is a um, service that you can pay like nine bucks a month, and you can get nearby everything that you can get on cable. And you can add HBO and Showtime and stuff like that. Well, that's, so that's pretty cool. And they got a DVR also option. Uh, Hulu and... Uh, a really important one for us is VidAngel. VidAngel is a service uh, that allows you to filter your Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime videos and cut out the objectionable parts. If you don't like the cussing or the sex scene. <sighs> Sorry, screen went black again. I don't know about this thing. I really want to switch to YouTube, but... So VidAngel is really good for that. It allows you to customize. You can customize the filter. You bring up the show you want to watch, and it's got all these different settings. How many times different things are, you know, like nudity or profanity and stuff, and then you can just turn those things off. There's lots of movies we would not have watched if it wasn't for that fact. VidAngel is also trying to, they're uh, actually being uh, har harassed by Hollywood right now because what they used to let you do is buy a movie from them, any any uh, movie that's available on DVR or uh, on a DVD, and, and then you could uh, set up your edits for it on uh, on a uh, digital so that you could get it just like you want it. But Hollywood didn't let them edit their, their their movies, so they they took them took them to court. But in the meantime, VidAngel came up with this other service where they can go ahead and filter stuff that you stream, like Netflix and 
and Amazon and so forth. And down below in the, in the guide section, there's an added benefit of the Roku, and that's the re main reason I had it on here is there's an app for that. So that's that for that. Uh, what today? It's International Nurses Day. So kudos to Allie out there, Allie CQ, as she's named on Facebook. She just graduated yesterday in, in nursing. My wife's a nurse, and I know there's lots of you out there that are nurses. So it's International Nurses Day. It's also Stay Up All Night Night, so that has to do with the Night Night Sun. And it's also Sun Awareness Day, so that's Night Night and Sun. Got that one covered. It's National Nutty Fudge Day, so that's part of the, that's Nutty Buddy. Uh, it's National Babysitter's Day. If y'all see a pattern here, it's National Babysitter's Day, tomorrow's Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. It's Limerick Day. Limerick Day was... Uh, it's, a, it's credited to Edward Lear, who was uh, born on May the 12th, 1812. Um, and the first, the first limerick was, was uh, in about 1820, which was not him, but he published a book in 1846 that, called The Book of Nonsense, which had a lot of limericks in it. So that's why people think of him as being the, the uh, originator of limericks. But uh, limericks are pretty interesting poems. There's a, I'm going to put a link to a limerick generator, or a couple of limerick generators. And I, well, the limerick I learned yesterday, there was, uh, there was an old man from Nantucket who kept his money in a bucket. His daughter named Nan ran away with a man, and as for the money, Nantucket. <laughs> That's pretty close. It wasn't exact. Of course, there's some rude ones out there, but it's it's a good mental exercise to learn how to to write uh, a limerick. So there's going to be a link on how to how to teach yourself to write limericks also. Um, let's see where are we? Limerick Day. Okay, it's also la letter carriers stamp out hunger food drive day. So this is a be a stamp champ. Apparently what's going on today, now I've never noticed this before, and maybe it's just not done in this area of the country, but supposedly the, the mail carriers are supposed to leave you a bag yesterday, like a grocery bag, but it's for stamp, stamping out hunger. And you're supposed to fill it up with um, canned goods and stuff like that, and then put it by the mailbox, and today they're supposed to pick it up. So, I've never seen those instructions, so this is all new to me. So if you want to see what happens, you can get yourself a grocery bag and put some some canned goods and put it by the mailbox, see what the mailman does with it. Instructions did did not say to put it in the mailbox, said to put it by the mailbox. Uh, I think it's a federal crime to use the mailbox for anything other than mail. So I think that's the reason they said that. So that's interesting. Uh, where are we? International Nurses Day, International Migratory Bird Day. That's a little bird told me. It's Birth Mother's Day. Oh, that's another day before Mother's Day thing. It's brunch for lunch day. And if you look that up, that has to do with Mother's Day too, if you're planning for Mother's Day. Uh, this has to do with, do they know about second breakfast? Because that's what I call brunch, second breakfast. It's, if you like to eat and you get up before your wife, go ahead and fix yourself some breakfast and then take her to brunch. And then you can have lunch and then you can have dinner. Love and eat. It's also natural, National Archery Day, the oldest known sport. Um, it was national Archery Day is observed annually on the second Saturday in May, one of the oldest sports still in existence. Archery has been around since before 2800 BC. Bows have been used for hunting and battle. Archery was introduced to, uh, in, to the modern Olympic Games in 1900, but only a appeared again in 1904, 1908, and 1920, and then once again after a long absence it returned in 1972. So you would think it would have been there sooner, sooner than that. Uh, an interesting tidbit about uh, errors, and this is just touching on God just a bit, is that uh, there's some scripture in um, Proverbs about how blessed it is to have a quiver full of children. Well, Israel quiver held 18 to 20 arrows. So basically that scripture was saying you're really blessed if you got 18 to 20 kids. Okay, um, so that's the rest of the story. What's going on? Well, I'm 
I'm turning into a curmudgeon again, I guess, because last week, you know, after I was bragging on myself not being a curmudgeon, you know, being called uh, Puddle Glum and Eeyore, I got called Puddle Glum and Eeyore by somebody that didn't see my video, a family member, <laughs> of course. And I, I took exception to it, of course, but what's going on today kind of has put me back, back in cur curmudgeon mode, only, only humorously, though. And it has to do with Mother's Day. Tomorrow is Mother's Day. Today is Birth Mother's Day, Babysitter's Day, uh, Brunch Day. It's all these days for mothers, today and tomorrow. And tomorrow, if you're, well, I'm fortunate in that our church doesn't really go overboard on these pseudo holidays. So it's it's not going to be that bad for me but the churches i used to go to mother's days were they were just the pits i mean everybody came to church it was kind of like an easter and all the moms got flowers and then you had to hear a sermon about mothers and it was always how good they are and then when father's day comes around they talk about hey, get off the sofa you losers get out and do something for your family it's like father's day is like the day to get on somebody's case and Mother's Day is talking about how um, how great mothers are. And, well, yeah, mothers are great. But uh, let me tell you about some, well you saw some of the, the uh, Mother's Day things I was telling you about, but but check this out. This, this is These are the days that happen around Father's Day. Father's Day is also Global Garbage Man Day, Ladies Initiated in Baseball Day, National Vinegar Day, No Orange Clothes Day, Husband Caregiver Day. Father's Day is Husband Caregiver Day. That's saying that kind of like a Mother's Day, but for a wife. Yeah. It's National Eat Your Vegetables Day and Family Awareness Day. So it's days for the the husband to honor his caregiver and uh, and and be aware of his family. Well, there goes my curmudgeoning. Um, there's some movies you can watch. I'm not, I don't have these in, in case you missed it, but uh, I thought they were kind of funny. One is Mommy Dearest. That's a Mother's Day movie you can watch. And then Mildred Pierce. Now, Mildred Pierce, this is interesting because the movie that Mommy Dearest is about, Joan Crawford, is she, she starred in in the movie Mildred Pierce. And Mildred Pierce is the exact opposite mother image than... <laughs> And mom, mommy dearest she plays a mother who's abused by by her daughter and all kinds of stuff so that's it's kind of interesting that she's involved in both those those mirror uh movies uh which reminds me a lot of these old movies could be really refreshed there's some movies that i've watched that uh they're great movies but they the music is terrible i mean this music from the period from the from the era or mu music that is from the era but it's not good music so consequently when you watch it the music just completely ruins the movie and I was thinking if you could take some of these old movies and put a different soundtrack to them you might have a, uh, they might uh, like have these revivals for these these movies anyway um, law, uh, my, my weight loss program going uh, I kind of stabled out stabled out and this is where people usually usually quit uh, what happens is you start losing weight, and if you're doing exercise like I'm doing, then you're also putting on muscle. And as you're putting on, it comes a point in your diet when you're putting on this, almost the same amount of muscle as you are losing fat. So when you get on the scales, it doesn't look like you're losing anything, and you, but you, you're still eating, eating like you should be losing weight. So it's this is the point where you can do a couple of things. One, stop weighing for about a week. I got a lot more going. Stop weighing, stop weighing for about a week, uh, and you can also start wearing clothes that are a little too tight for you. And that's what I'm doing today. This shirt is a, a large. I'd actually gotten so big that I was wearing extra large. Large is my normal shirt, and this one's got my a little tight around the belly, just a little bit. And then you, what'll happen is you'll notice that the tightness is going away day by day. So I only lost a pound last week. So. Uh, but I'm still doing the push-ups. I'm 
was doing, say last week I was doing three sets of 40 and I'm doing three sets of 45, so they're going up a little bit. I added the hip training and I've also started back swimming. So I am putting, I know I'm putting on more muscle than normal, so that's, that's what's going on with the weight loss. And I wanted to give you a Vegemite update, and I did the Vegemite thing last week in an off schedule, and uh, I didn't really finish it, but uh, this is the Vegemite. I got this off of Amazon. It's only like seven bucks. So I don't really know what my family was complaining about. They were begging me not to order this, but um, and I didn't think there was much to it. But it actually does have quite a bit of uh, B1 riboflavin, B3, and folic acid. Now I can tell you right now, this stuff is really salty and malty. It's got uh, the ingredients are uh, yeast extract from barley and wheat, salt malt extract from barley, flavor enhancer, which is potassium chloride, and color. And I don't know why they had to add color because the thing's black. And then uh, spice extract contains celery. Lots of niacin, thiamine, rib riboflavin, and folic acid. And um, what, what, we, what we figured out about this is that, and Sarah, I think, hit on it. The Australians, and I guess the British too, they, when they eat white bread, which doesn't have much flavor, they butter it with their butter, which doesn't have salt in it like in America. This is what we're pretty sure of. Somebody from that used to live in England, or lives in England, can, can uh, tell me. Maybe uh, Chris, Chris could tell me. Um, Chris Colker. She, she just got back from England. Um, but I, I'm thinking their butter is not salted. So they, when they butter their toast, they're white bread, which doesn't have any flavor, and they got butter on it, and it doesn't have any much flavor. They add a little bit of Vegemite, which puts the saltiness in it. And we got salt in our butter. My, you know, now, to test this out, yesterday I had, I ate some on video the other day, and it was a little too salty. And yesterday I had a piece of bread. I toasted it and put ghee on it. The ghee is clarified butter, and there's no salt added. And it's really good for doing ketogenic diets. So I put that on there. And I knew that wasn't going to taste very good, so I took a thin layer of Vegemite and put it on there, and it was wonderful. So, the only problem with it, another problem with it, though, is that uh, it, you don't use much. See, I've, we've used it like four times, and that's all that's gone. And it turns out that a serving size is five grams, and there's 220 grams in here, so that means there's 44 servings. 44 servings in here. So, Vegemite. That's the last you'll hear of Vegemite. And I forgot to tell you, I got my coffee, it's black. You've been seeing me drink it. But there it is. So that's the Vegemite. So that's what went. Well, let's see what we're doing here. Oh, we're doing pretty good. Okay, they blinded me with science. Debunking commonly held scientific beliefs and pointing out where science gets it wrong. Saturated fats. Uh, a lot of, we've been hearing about saturated fats being bad for you for near about my whole life. I mean, we, they first started with butter when I was a kid, and they switched us over to margarine, which margarine is actually a lot worse for you than butter. So, but it basically, and they steered us away from coconut oil and palm kernel oil, all kinds of these different oils. Some of them probably they are still bad for you, like cottonseed oil. I can't, I can't imagine that one being too good for you, but it may be. But it turns out coconut oil is great for you. And it's a saturated fat. So check out this video on saturated fats and how they're good for you. And that, it depends on where the fat comes from, of course. It's coming from a, an animal that's been shot up with drugs and stuff like that, and it probably isn't good for you. But if it's coming from a healthy animal, it's probably good for you. Or a healthy, like coconuts. But your brain is made of fat. And I think, I have this theory that a lot of times people have Alzheimer's and that kind of those, those uh, brain wasting diseases are really just diseases you get from starving yourself of fat too much because your, your body, your brain actually needs fat. This is where the be a fat head instead of a meat head. The meat head part's coming down, coming down in the God section if y'all want to hang around for that. Um, as a kind of a humorous thing, is it going to be a scene from Sleeper up above? Uh, where they talk about what's what was considered healthy <laughs> back in the 70s when um, uh, well Woody Allen made this movie, but it, t it takes place in the future from then. So, so and you you'll be surprised at what they they say uh, they now say is healthy is actually pretty close to what we're saying is healthy right now. It's pretty funny, I think. 
Also, there's going to be a link to Serial Killers. The movie Serial Killers is about a guy whose dad, who was a very, uh, who was an athlete and ate like he was supposed to eat, or as the government says, you know, the food pyramid. He was an athlete, he was like a football player, and I forgot, some kind of football, you know, Irish football. It's not, it's not soccer or something else. <clears throat> but he was a, his dad was a star there, and he had a, ended up having a heart attack. So his his son, the guy that did the movie, uh, started re researching why his dad had a heart attack when he was eating so healthy and being so healthy. So check that out. It, it's just a trailer because you got to actually pay for the movie. It's called Serial Killers, but it's a pretty interesting trailer. And that's science. Okay, in case you missed it. There's a new Robin Hood coming out. You know, this, this seems like every seven years a Robin Hood comes out. It's kind of like the uh, Batman movies and Superman movies, apparently. Um, but this one looks pretty bad. So, And this is, has to do with archery. I'm going to put a trailer to it. There's also some other movies. I think my favorite is the, the one by uh, uh, Crow. I can't remember his first name. Last name's Crow, actor, 2010. Kevin Cosner did a pretty good one, I thought, in 1993, although I don't think of Kevin Cosner as a really great actor, and it's pretty apparent in this movie. But if you watch it, uh, see how he does when he's addressing his merry men, because he's talking like this in a very quiet voice, and he's like addressing 2,000 men. I said, like, come on, Kevin. Get some acting going there. So anyway... Kevin Costner. Now, the scene stealer in, in Kevin Costner's Robin Hood is Alan Rickman, who is a hoot as the sheriff of Nottingham. He has uh, he played it very campy. Uh, I don't know if they intended it that way, but it is very very humorous. Makes a pretty bad bad guy. Alan Rickman's was one of my favorite actors. He died last year, I believe, at a very young age, I think. But uh, that's Robin Hood. Of course, there's the first Robin Hood by Errol Flynn. My daughter watched that the other day. I didn't didn't get to do that. It's the 1938 version. It's kind of what we typically think of Robin Hood, I think. Or maybe it's just the soul guys. And then there's the movie Emma. Now, this has to do with um, archery. It's the first movie I thought of with archery because Gwyneth Paltrow, who plays Emma, is shooting, shoots arrows at, at point, one point in this movie. Uh, if you've never seen Emma, it's a Jane Austen movie. I watch it with my wife and girls. I watch, I'm, you, you guys that don't know, I like period piece movies. Not not for the the uh, chick flick part of it, but more for the mannerisms and the the humor. There's a lot of kind of sophisticated kind of humor in them. Um, Emma is was redone modern day for for teenagers a few years back in a movie called Clueless. So if you want to know what the plot line of Emma is, it's the same thing as the plot line for Clueless. Clueless was basically a repackaged Emma. It stars uh, Jeremy Northam, who my wife will be sad to hear, did not even show up in the Wikipedia definition, uh, Wikipedia entry for Emma. <laughs> and he's like the co-star. <laughs> Jeremy Northam is one of her favorite actors. He's, uh, I guess he's kind of underrated, uh, but he, didn't, he hasn't starred in much. But he, he stars next to Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, Tony Collette, who became pretty much famous after this movie, uh, I think it's the only movie I remember her in before that. Tony Collette, what was that movie? I can't even remember it. But she was also in a, about a boy and some uh, some other movies. Uh, the way way back, you know, she's 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 a pretty good actress. Alan Cumming, I know you guys know about him, and Ewan McGregor before he was famous. He was in this movie. So, Emma. Sunshine for Sun Appreciation. Now, I cannot recommend this movie, but my daughter can. So, that's why it's on here. This is a very uh, dark science fiction. Um, it's about, just to give you a, a dark in it, sunshine. Isn't that interesting? It's a, it's a movie about trying to save the sun. The sun is, is about to go out. It takes place in the future. stars Chris Evans before he was famous. Cillian Murphy, before he was famous. Benedict Wong, which you may have seen, if you've seen the word, the uh, movie Marsh, The Martian, he's the uh, the Chinese guy that's head of the uh, uh, the division that's building the rocket. Uh, he, he was also in Doctor Strange as the librarian, Benedict Wong. And Michelle Yeoh. 
Monty Python and the Holy Grail. This is for archery and migratory birds. I had to throw that one in there. Of course, y'all know who stars in that, so I won't go over that. Alice doesn't live here anymore. This is this is for Mother's Day. Uh, it's uh, this movie was the the impetus for Mel's Place. Is impetus the right word? I think it is. For Mel's Place, a TV show that happened when I was a teenager that starred Ellen. No, this star. This is uh, who stars in the movie. Ellen Burstyn when she was young. Chris Christopherson. Diane Ladd and Jodie Foster as uh, pre prepubescent teen, maybe, I guess, who ends up befriending um, Ellen's son. This has to do with motherhood, being a mother. Um, Alice was the name of the TV show that was a spinoff of the movie. Uh, where, and the guy that played, played Mel and Alice doesn't live here anymore, the, the cook, he's also the cook in the TV show. So he's the only one that, that made the switch from the movie over to the TV show. Another uh, good Mother's Day movie, and continuing with my Sally Field theme from last week, is Murphy's Romance. Now, I like Murphy's Romance for a bunch of reasons. There's just a humongous number of reasons I like this movie. Sally Field being one of them. James Garner, which is a, uh, another uh, favorite actor of mine. I, I, for some reason, he reminded me of my dad. And I can't tell you exactly why, except for he's got dark hair, or, you know. But for some reason, if I had to pick an actor to play my dad, it would have been James Garner. Um, and James Garner plays a man of character in this movie, which is one of the big reasons I like this movie. Also, it was the same thing with Chris Christopherson in the previous movie. He was kind of a man of character also. That was one reason I like it. Um, Murphy's Romance... Uh, James Garner plays a pharmacist. My dad was a pharmacist, maybe? No, that couldn't be why I, like, I was associating them together because this was, movie was after, in the 80s. Um, the music is awful in this movie. So it's one reason that I, I mentioned that up by revamping old movies up above. I mean, it's a movie about, about but being down in Texas. It, we got country, cowboy hats and horses. I mean, it's modern day. I mean, well, modern day at the time in the 80s. And all the music, no country, no no cowboy music, no country music. It was just contemporary junk music. So check that out. I could not find a trailer on it, so it's just going to be a little scene in there. Um, it's a, a pretty good scene that you can check out. And this kind of reminded me of, uh, I saw... I saw an interview with Sally Field where that guy was just berating her over Burt Reynolds and and who did the best online screen kiss and stuff. It was just it was just weird, and it got me thinking. Uh, so I ended up watching a couple of interviews. So there's going to be a couple of interviews about Sally Field and Burt Reynolds. Now y'all might not know this, but Burt Reynolds and Sally Field were an item at one time, and uh, Burt Reynolds uh, kind of regretted leaving Sally Field. So. It's, it's a pretty sad ending for Burt Reynolds. It kind of reminded me of Lucy and Desi Arnaz, you know, because Desi stepped out on Lucy and lived to regret it. It's basically the same thing happened to Burt Reynolds. All right, for Night Night, there's going to be a Night Night Marathon. It's what I was suggesting for tonight, so stay up all night, night tonight. So um, what, what better to do than staying up all night but watching the marathon of movies? So you got a few few choices here. My, these are three suggestions. Lord of the Rings. There's um, if you have the Lord of the Rings extended editions, they're like three hours a piece. There's three of them, so that'll give you nine hours of TV watching that you can get through the night with. It covers archery, second breakfast, brunch, migratory birds. It covers a lot. Another one that you can a series you can watch, especially if you're going to have the kids up with you. Night at the museum. The original, Battle of the, Miss, the Smithsonian, which is the second one, and Secret of the Tomb, which is the third one. So that's going to take you about six hours. And then uh, for the Train It Up, what do, I, what do I call it? Training It Up, or the Training It Up part, and Mother's Day. Throw Mama from the Train. <laughs> Throw Mama from the Train for Mother's Day, Training It Up. Strangers on a Train, which was the uh, movie that Throw Mama from the Train was really based on an Alfred Hitchcock movie. It's serious, not a, not a comedy, of course. And then there's two or three versions of Murder on the Orient Express, 
and that uh, I'm going to put down there for you guys to check out. So that's in case you missed it. YouTube this coconut oil. Now what you're going to find is uh, lots of applications for coconut oil which are is actually good for you. Um, it's good for it's like suntan lotion, sunscreen. It's I think a SPF 4 I think as a sunscreen. Might be two. But anyway, it's, it's a sunscreen, a healthy for you sunscreen. So check that out. Okay, what the heck? This is some uh, only a fool would say that section. Basically, because a lot of what I'm going to say, y'all probably aren't going to agree with. Y'all just going to have to, if I, I say something you don't agree with, just know that, you know, I think I'm right, but I could be wrong. Don't let it, don't let it come between us, you know. It's kind of like what Kanye West said a few years ago. Know, we're all free thinkers. We're all, we're, nobody's going to think exactly the same way as everybody else. So, Just a little grace, a little mercy. All right, what the heck? Only a fool would say that. Sunscreens. Now, my theory on sunscreens is that sunscreens cause cancer. See, this is gonna, that's going to sound irritating to you, I know. But sunscreen, when you put on a sunscreen, you're putting on chemicals, artificial chemicals, that prevent the sun from getting to your skin to produce vitamin D. Now, vitamin D is critical for the prevention of cancer. So basically, you're keeping yourself from getting vitamin D by putting on sunscreen. And not only that, most well, I won't say most, but a lot of the sunscreens have a vitamin A in it that are proven carcinogens. So not only are you preventing getting vitamin D, but you're putting on something that actually causes cancer. Now, my rule of thumb for, for me, except for body soap, is if I can't eat it, I'm not going to put it on my skin. Because anything you put on your skin is going to absorb it. You, think about nicotine patches. You know, you're trying to quit smoking. You put a nicotine patch on there. How does that nicotine get in? It gets through. It gets through into your bloodstream through the skin. And it's the same thing for anything they put, that you put on, especially if you got some kind of vehicle like oil that'll carry it through, or alcohol like you do those spray, those spray things. They found out. I just ran into a study last week about how those uh, spray. Um, that lawnmower's bother me. <laughs> this, the, sp the spray sunscreen are, are, are bad for you. Breathing that stuff is bad for you. And these people are all the time spraying that stuff at the pool upwind for me. So I got to sit there and hold my breath. I don't give my hard time about it though, so I'm not curmudging. Uh, sunscreens. If you don't eat it, don't put it on your skin. Coconut oil. Coconut oil is great sunscreen. And I found out one thing about us, you know, I used to say you don't, you don't uh, wear out, you rust out. My dad used to tell me that. And then basically, this is, I knew this back in high school when I was, I remember telling somebody about this in band practice, about how the average lifespan of somebody that retired is seven years. So why would you want to retire? Because that's like, you know, you've got seven years you retire. So I used to say you don't wear out, you rust out. But today, I don't think that's true. I think today... You don't wear out, you flame out. You end up getting inf inflammation from sitting around, eating the wrong stuff. And the, before you know it, your joints start messing up. You got your hip problems, you got your knee problems, and you get hip replacements and knee replacements when all you really needed to do is watch what you eat so that you don't cause infl inflammation in your body and to, and to do some exercise. Now, if you do the uh, intermittent fasting exercise like I've been doing or the diet diet and exercise then your growth hormone is going to kick up to almost a thousand percent from what I understand now if you if you cut out inflammation and you start uh, doing something to boost your growth hormone your joints are going to repair themselves you know it's not like the medical community has a tendency to make you think that you're wearing out, but you're not really wearing out. You're just not, your body is just not getting the chance to repair itself. So you cut out the inflammation. You start eating healthy so that you can build stuff. You do something like, you don't have to do the, the kind of diet I'm doing, which is kind of like a warrior diet. It's more, you can eat two meals a day instead of, instead of three, you know. But the basically is to go at least 12 hours without eating anything so that you're, your body can produce growth hormone. Now, the, uh, the, what kills growth hormone is carbohydrates. Well, not actually carbohydrates, insulin. Insulin kills growth hormone. So if you're diabetic, 
which comes from eating too much, too much sweets or too much high fructose corn syrup. That's the, that's the big killer right now as far as making you uh, diabetic is the high fructose corn syrup. You cut all that stuff out, your body's going to recover a little bit and you start producing growth hormone again. So you guys that are having joint problems out there and you want to you know, send, me a, send me an email if you want and I'll, I'll help you out you know, or talk, give you some more tips if you want. I don't want to stay on it too much. I know I'm irritating you. I irritate a lot of you anyway. Healthy fudge. There's a link to how to make some healthy fudge. This is the nutty buddy thing. It's a sub. Uh, you can substitute nuts for the nibs. They're using, in this particular recipe. They're using cocoa nibs. And cocoa nibs are these little chunks of um, cacao. So it's not it's not sweet at all, but they're chunks. So they kind of they got a bitter taste to them. So they're using that for the crunch. And what you can do to make them nutty instead is to sub substitute nuts for the nibs. Anyway, you can check those, check that out. Okay, and then uh, it's, this is um, it's important to get probiotics in our in our food or healthy bacteria and yeast and stuff into your system. Last week I talked about uh, kombucha. This week I'm talking about uh, another fermented food. We get this from the, an Amish farm in. Pennsylvania they send food down to this area they probably send it to Greenville and some other areas too and I'll give you a link to their website but that you can get a lot of different fermented foods from them this one is fermented hot salsa it's got a little bit of a, a tang to it kind of like if you guys gone to a restaurant and gotten grapefruit juice before and it had a, it had a little tang to it that's, that's fermented grapefruit juice is basically what that is not bad for you it's actually good for you um, I used to return it because I was a big grapefruit, grapefruit juice fan, not an orange juice fan. So, and not everybody orders grapefruit juice at a restaurant. So, and consequently, it's very easy for grapefruit juice to to ferment. I used to send it back, but I'm never going to send it back anymore because it's fermented. It's got a good fermentation in it. Uh, but it's tomatoes, hot peppers, onions, Celtic sea salt, was it Celtic sea salt, whey, garlic, and cayenne pepper. The name of the farm is Miller Organic Farm. We get a lot of pro of stuff from them not as not as much as we used to right now that about the only thing we get I guess is this fermented salsa and sometimes we get fermented kimchi but we get all our organic raw organic milk legally from those guys and if you want to taste some good milk there's some good milk that they got um, let's see Stephanie out there who watches this sometimes she's we pick it up from so that's Page two. We're on page two. Page two a little early because we're still doing the book. I hadn't done the book them yet, and I'm still doing this book. Switch on your brain. I have not done a, I, I kind of dropped the ball. I hadn't done my little plan on it, but I'm just planning on doing it. And if you hang on, hang on down into the um, jump starting section, the little surprise on switch on your brain down there. But this is uh, the key to peak happiness, thinking, and health. If you want to reprogram yourself to be a happy person instead of a curm curmudgeon, then this is, this is the book that will help you do it. And it's a biblically-based book, so take that into consideration. Um, let's see, where are we? You don't mean it. Gossip. And this is, has to do with a little birdie told me. In scripture, in Proverbs, it talks about how anything you say was taken by a bird to somebody else and whispered in there. I don't think it's a real bird, of course, but it could very, very easily be a spirit. But a lot of people don't know what gossip is. Now, I had a friend who was a victim of gossip sometime back when the kids were little. And we were talking one day about it, and then we kind of like, I don't know, he was just... He just asked me never to gossip about him. And then I realized I didn't even know what the word gossip really means. You know, to me, gossip was what uh, Aunt B did on Andy Griffith when Barney hurt his finger cleaning a gun and they ended up having him dead before the show was half over. He'd shot himself and killed himself. That, that was my idea of what gossip is. And it turns out that's not, that's not really gossip. Uh, gossip... And I don't think you can find a real good definition of gossip. So what I ended up doing was making my own and see how it 
holds up for you guys. And, and my definition of gossip, my, my definition is gossip is when you repeat a fact or a lie, it can be either, about a person in order to do that person's character harm. Uh, now, it, it, uh, it can be done to elevate your own, your own uh, to elevate yourself in the, in the sight of somebody else. So it's a lot of times you, don't, you might not think you're putting the person down as much as you're elevating yourself. But let's say you ran across somebody who was uh, pregnant out of wedlock. Telling other people about, now it all has to do with motivation because you could, you could have a friend who, a mutual friend that is a Christian who's also very concerned about her and you would want them to know so that they can pray, pray accordingly. But it has to do with your motivation. Are you motive, or is your motivation to, to tell somebody some juicy tidbit that actually does the person harm, then, then that's gossip. If you're legitimately saying something about doing it for, so for prayer, that's not gossip. But a lot of times people do that as an excuse. They use that as an excuse. They, it's a hidden agenda, basically. They say they're telling you so that you can pray, but, but in their heart they know that the real reason they're telling you is because they want to spread some juicy stuff about somebody. Now, Scripture has something has pretty harsh, harsh uh, idea. No, it's not really harsh. It's just harsh. It's harsh to our mind because of our culture. But uh, gossip is a terrible thing, and we don't think of it as being that, that terrible. It's not terrible until you're a victim of it. And you can think of gossip as a kind of bullying, a kind of cowardly bullying, because basically you're, you're doing something behind somebody's back that they know nothing about. The only way you, you, know, you can tell you're being gossiped about is by the way people treat you. Now, I know we got gossiped about a few years back, and I could tell I was being gossiped about because all these people, uh, we had mutual friends, and all of a sudden there was, our mutual friends were treating us terrible for no reason at all. And I, it's, and there's more than one friend doing it. Yeah, so I'm going, yeah, some, there's some gossip going on. So gossip is terrible, but if, in 1 Corinthians 5.11, there was some instruction that was written, and, and uh, this instruction had to do with people that were being uh, sexually promiscuous. But it has to do with all kinds of sin. And it was Paul written, writing to the Corinthians, which was a, a worldly church. And he says, but now I am writing to you that you must not associate with anyone. That means don't hang out. You're not supposed to hang out with these people. Now they, and they're, you're talking about believers here, not talking about lost people. You, there's a believer, and they're... And you're not to associate with anyone who claims to be a brother, there you go, or a sister, but is sexually immoral. So if they're, if they're sleeping around, you're not supposed to be hanging out with them. Sexually immoral, greedy. So that means they're after money. Now, I had a, I had a friend who was a Christian, and I found out he was, uh, he was a, a middleman guy. He was the guy between me and a, another guy that I was doing work for. He was like, I was like subcontracting for to him. And I found out that guy asked for a, a raise from that guy, I asked for a money, a rate increase to pass on to me, but he never passed it on to me. He kept it for himself. So that's, that's kind of like a greedy thing. So uh, you're not supposed, you're supposed to associate with sexually immoral or greedy, an idolater or slanderer. A slanderer in this, in this case is, is, a, uh, is a gossiper. A slanderer is somebody that tries to make somebody look bad. A drunkard or a swindler, do not even eat with such people. You're not even supposed to sit down and eat anything with people that are like that. And that's it. That's what gossip means. If you're gossiping, stop it. Sermonette, meatheads, don't be a fat, don't be a meathead, be a fathead, right? All right, well, I told you about what a fat head is. Fat head's good. You want to eat a lot of fat, you want fat in your head. Your brain is made of fat. It needs, it needs fat. Now we're talking about meatheads. So what's a meathead? Well, it, there's a scripture that says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, carnally is a word that we get uh, carny from, from down south, down in the Spanish language. 
and I don't know if you guys know what carny means, but you know, chili con carny is, you know, they don't call it that anymore. When I was a kid, it was called chili con carny. You know, we just call it chili. I used to think chili con carny meant chili with beans, but carny means meat. So chili con carny is actually chili with meat. So what we call chili is really chili con carny. So I don't know what you would call it if it was with beans. It would be chili con carne con whatever they call beans, I guess, beano. So carnally minded is being a meathead. You, carnal means meat. And what does carnally minded mean? It, it means that your mind is on earthly things all the time. Now you guys that are lost, you, can, you haven't got much choice because you only got a one good mind and that's your carnal mind. You do, you do have a spiritual mind, but it's separated from God, so that's that's where you get, uh, oh, sorry about the microphone. That's where you get witchcraft and stuff like that from. Those are people that, are, they're not only carnally minded, but they're spiritually minded in a bad way. They're spiritually minded with their dead spirit, their spirit that's separated from God. But if you're a believer, you're, you've got a completely new spirit, a spirit from God, the Holy Spirit. So like one third of you is wall to wall Holy Ghost. You're, inside married to your spirit your new spirit is the holy spirit and it's the whole thing is holy uh, spiritually holy um so as as believers we can either be carnally minded which means our mind in the world which is where we find ourselves naturally uh, we, because of our habit i mean we habitually live the carnal life so basically we're going to be carnally minded all the way up until we get born again we're going to be carnally minded uh, but once you're once you're born again, you're supposed to be spiritually minded. And the spiritually minded, you get a lot of. I'm trying to catch a bug in case y'all wondering what I'm doing. Uh, if you're spiritually minded, you get, you're going to have life and peace. Now, what does this mean? To, for to be carnally minded is death. Now that's kind of scary, isn't it? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, you guys that didn't catch my stream uh, many weeks ago, the definition of death in Scripture is not cessation doesn't mean to be to cease like we think of death you know like if somebody dies they cease they cease living and they go they're putting the putting the ground death in scripture means separation when adam died in the garden of eden on the day that he ate from the knowledge of the ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil god said on the day you eat of that fruit you will die and a lot of us could read that scripture and see that he doesn't die, but he did die. He died spiritually. And then how did he die spiritually? Well, his, his spirit was separated from God's spirit. He could no longer communicate with God spiritually on the spiritual level. That's what's restored to us as born-again believers. We're, our spirit has been restored so that we can communicate with God. That's how we know God is real. Um, so... But to, to be spiritually minded is life is peace. So to be carnally minded is death. Now, how can you tell if you're being carnally minded? Well, if you're a born again Christian and you don't feel born again and you're sitting there doubting whether you're born again and you're going like, I don't even know if I'm really born again. I know, we've all been there. And the reason why you're there is because you're carnally, you're being carnally minded. The carnal mind cannot conceive of God, cannot relate to God. It is actually an enemy of God. So. Consequently, when you're carnally minded, you're going to feel lost. You'll feel like a lost person. That's carnally minded. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, if you're being spiritually minded, if, if you're being spiritually minded, the thought of you not being born again doesn't even cross your mind. It is not even there. It, it's, it's, it's such a given that you're born again that you don't, it, you're not even thinking about it. And you're having life and you're having peace. <clears throat> because the carnal mind is enmity against God. I'm continuing on with what I was reading. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they, so then they, that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're being carnally minded, you're not pleasing God. Now, he loves you, and you're still born again, but if you're being carnally minded, you're not pleasing God. And if you're not pleasing God, then that means you're not using your faith. Because the Scripture says, without faith, you cannot please God. So, 
You cannot use faith with the carnal mind, only with the renewed spiritual mind. Hebrews 11.6 But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So how can you tell which one you're using? You know, we talked about that earlier, or just a few seconds ago, about the way you, a couple of ways, you know, if you're doubting you're born again, then you're in the carnal mind. If, you, if that's not even crossing your mind, then you're in the spiritual mind. If you got life and peace, you're in the spiritual mind. If you don't have life and peace, and you got, well, let's look at some of the stuff that you got. You, you, know, you guys read, it, read up on some of these. Uh, Romans 1, 29 through 32, read that one. 1 Corinthians 6, 1 through 11, and then this is Galatians 5 through 13. The others I'll leave, let y'all read. I don't, I, I'm kind of, actually I'm doing pretty good, 10 minutes till, but I didn't put down what the scriptures were. I just put the references. But this is Galatians 5, 13. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Y'all remember the golden rule, or what the two laws, or two, well, they, the Pharisees, well, the Pharisees and Sadducees, was the Pharisees asked Jesus what was the most important commandment, and he said to love the Lord your God with all your strength, mind, I can't even remember, there's four. Not three, four, because it's kind of like a fourth dimension, four dimensions to it. Uh, strength, will, mind, and soul, something like that. I'll put a reference up there. And then the second law is similar to it, love thy neighbor as yourself. So if you're in the spirit, you're no longer under the law, the letter of the law. You're under the law of love, hope, and faith. And in the law of love, you're loving people. You love your neighbor. You love God. You just all you have to do is love people. You don't have to worry about sinning. So, is it possible to walk down here on this earth perfectly? Well, if you love on everybody all the time, 24/7, then yeah, you're you're doing what Jesus did. So, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, guys. So I've been seeing some guys on these sites that teach you how to heal the sick and raise the dead and stuff like that, and they're hating on people. They're being just like the First Corinthian church. They're, they're saying, well, I'm following Paul, and I'm following Apollos, you know, and all these other guys. Well, it's not who you follow. It's who, you're, who, who you are in Christ. Uh, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, what is lust? If you look back at some of them, uh, uh, no, well, I'm just going to tell you what lust is. Lust is not what you think it is. Lust, a lot of people think uh, what lust is is sexual, uh, sexual desire, but it's really uh, more than that. It's desire. It's a strong desire to do something. So a lust of the flesh could be anything. It could be uh, being a movie-aholic. It could be an alcoholic. It could be uh, you could be uh, addicted to pornography. All this stuff that's lust. So the, and that's the the lust of the flesh. So how do you avoid the lust of the flesh? How do you get out of it? What well, it says right there, walk in the spirit. This is kind of like don't think of a pink elephant. Now, how do you keep from thinking about a pink elephant? Is it by not trying not to think about a pink elephant or thinking about something else? Well, it's about thinking about something else, because that's our human nature. Our human nature, you can't, you don't tell a, a person not to do something. Basically, you tell them to do something else, and this is what you do. You walk in the Spirit. If you walk in the Spirit, all of a sudden, you're not going to have the lust for the things that you know are wrong. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't have some kind of desire to do it. You'll just re be able to resist it. <clears throat> and the more you resist, the weaker it gets. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. So let the spirit win. And these are contra contrary to one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if ye be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Remember I said that just a minute ago. You're not under the law if you're being led by the spirit. You don't have to worry about fulfilling laws, because you're not under the law. 
Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, which is sex out of, outside of marriage, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, I don't even know what the emulations is, wrath, lots of people got wrath problems, strife problems, seditions problems, heresies, teaching against, teaching things that aren't in, in scripture, or, or, or contradicting scripture, like saying a sword, the sword of the spirit joins the soul and the spirit together instead of dividing it, that's a heresy. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, rev revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, those things that I listed, that, those are the those are the works of the flesh. That's so. If you're doing those things, then yeah, that's what, that's how you can tell you're in the flesh. <clears throat> but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith meekness, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. I <laughs> love that. Against such there is no law. You know what that means basically? That means you can do all of those things as much as you want. You, you can't do too much of it. You can have as much as you want. It's like being at a buffet and you can eat everything on the buffet and you don't have to worry about it. Let me go over them again. Fruit of the Spirit, love. You can be filled with love. You can, you can go crazy with love. You can go crazy with joy, peace, long-suffering. Long-suffering, that means you know, just putting up with people. You learn how to put up with people, and you can, you can say, well, I'm, you know, if you're in the flesh, you get to a point where you go, I can't put up it with it any longer, and then you blow up. If you're in the spirit, you can put up with it. Slight irritation, maybe, but it, this, the slight irritation doesn't get more and more and more. You can, you're long-suffering. You can have as much as that as you want. You can long-suffer as long as you want. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh. Now you guys out there that says, I'm, I crucify the flesh daily. Well, I don't know what you're talking about because here it says it's been crucified, past tense. Have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Now, what does that mean? That means our flesh is dead, guys. You're, if you're in the flesh right now, all that means is you're in something that's dead. You're animating in something that is not you. It's not you any longer, but you're living there. So get out of it. Move to the Spirit. And they that, have, uh, they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. That's where we live. We live in the Spirit. Even though we're, our thinking may be in the flesh, our life is in the spirit. We are spirit. We are spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. And if God sees us that way. He sees us as spirit with a soul living in a body. We think of ourselves as a body that has a soul inside and way back there in the back is a spirit. But that's, that's not the way it is. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another and envying one another. And so, you got, don't be a meathead. Be, a, be spiritually minded. Now, how do you get from meathead to spiritually minded? Because you know, that was a big question for me. One morning, uh, we had a lot of work to do on the house, and typically when we do work as a family, we have a tendency to uh, do butt heads a lot and kind of stuff. So one morning I said, okay, this morning we're going to do it different. We prayed and we said, okay, Lord, keep us in the spirit all day today. And we just decided that we were just going to be in the spirit. We had a wonderful time cleaning gutters and doing all kinds of work on the house it was not an ill word spoke the whole day and it was wonderful so basically how do you get from the flesh to the spirit well you just decide that's what you're going to do now the way i do it in my mind this is my left i don't know what it is because the image is backwards but on my left in my mind is my flesh i kind of feel like i'm over on the left hand side when i'm in my flesh and when i'm on my in the spirit i feel like i'm on the right hand side so what i do is imagine i say okay i'm in the flesh i know i'm in the flesh because i've got these symptoms and I say okay I move into the spirit I just say okay I'm going to be spiritually minded from this point on I'm being spiritually minded and just the decision to be spiritually minded puts you in the spirit now you might have a little struggle if somebody's kind of dragging you into the flesh by berating you or you know uh, 
chewing you out about something. So that's possible. It'd be tough to get in the spirit, but it's doable. Do it first thing in the morning when you get up. This guy, I think it was John G. Lake, he got, he got up. The first thing he did was dance for joy with the Lord and turn the day over to the Lord. First thing out of the bed. It's not a bad suggestion. Uh, for jump starting, uh, it, this is a training it up thing, uh, part of the uh, training it up. What do I call those things? I'll, I'll call them mind trips, I guess. Training it up mind trip. Uh, life teams. Look for a life team in your area. Uh, I think you can Google it. You can also go to John G. Lake. These guys will do similar stuff that uh, the uh, Last Reformation group does. Last Reformation take people out for kickstarts. These guys do the same similar thing, but they do a life team. They, they're what you call... Um, uh, I forgot what it is. It's called DTS. And I can't remember what it stands for now. But anyway, life teams. Check out life teams. Um, Curry Blake is on Roku. I told you all about Roku earlier. Curry Blake is on Roku right now. He is doing a brand new seminar. He has a, t uh, a daily TV show where it's a half an hour show. And he's actually doing a seminar as the TV show. So he's, he's like a three-day seminar, and he's doing a half an hour at a time as a TV show. It's on renewing your mind, and a lot of the information in it has come from this book, Switch on Your Brain, and is really good. Now, to get to it, you got Roku. Find the, uh, in the channel store, find the channel Faith, Faith Broadcasting Network, and... Um, what do you do? Subscribe to that, I guess is what you call it. And then once you subscribe to that and you run it, find the topic called Faith Programs and then scroll down to John G. Lake and you'll, you'll find what you're looking for. Uh, now, the neat thing about this uh, Roku channel, Faith, it's, it's a TV network. A lot, of them, a lot of these shows, I think, are in, in South Africa only. That's the way it is with uh, Curry Blake's um, Dominion Life Now, I think is the name of his show. But there's also some other channels. Some of them, I don't know if they're, what they're like. You know, they could be anything. But Billy, there's a Billy Graham channel, and there's also a Sid Roth channel that's supernatural. I don't know if you guys seen Sid Roth, but he kind of he does a show about the supernatural, mostly Christian supernatural. I haven't seen any non-Christian supernatural, but it, it's kind of played up a little bit. But it's kind of interesting to watch. You might look like that. Also, in Jump Starting is uh, a video <coughs> called Stepping Out. How to get an open door. It's um, a guy, I guess, similar to me in that he goes out by himself uh, and he's got a video on how to approach people. Um, Jesus on the streets. Uh, this time it's Jesus on the New York streets. <laughs> Some guys have been on Sid Roth. Uh, Todd White, Torben Sundergaard uh, are the guys and they're actually ministering to people on the New York City streets. So it's, uh, sorry, this bug's bugging me. Yeah, I had that in my thing today. So if the bug's bugging you, then it's time to get the fly sweater. Um, and also, uh, Tom Fisher has got this... I, I don't know if you want to watch this. I had not watched it myself yet, because I, I usually don't have much of a attention span for some things. But Tom Fisher went out ministering on the street, and he videotaped the whole thing from the beginning to the end. So it's an unedited movie of him ministering on the street. Tom Fisher, who lives in Charlotte. <coughs> Rabbit Hole. Uh, this is kind of interesting thing. I don't know if this has ha happened to anybody. I'm going to post this later to one of those uh, groups. This this has happened to me. This is not something that I've seen, uh, and I, I call it a Holy Spirit ride along. And I don't. I didn't really realize what was happening for a long time. But basically, I get up like at three thirty or four o'clock in the morning, and it, this hab this is from a habit that happened to me when I was living in, in Greenville. Well, I got to hurry it up. Yeah, let's make a long story short. The Holy Spirit ride along. I was dreaming the other day, and I was in my dream. I was sitting in my diesel truck, six-wheeler diesel truck, listening to the radio in my driveway, thinking how much I, I love my truck. <laughs> and uh, my wife came up and knocked on the window, and I turned, and there was this guy there I had never seen. And so I rolled down the window and started talking to the guy. And then it came to me that you know to be polite. I really should, you know, cut cut the truck off, the radio off, get out and start talking to him. You know. And my what what was my wife doing? My wife was um, down by the uh, motorhome 
putting the finishing touches on a, a neighborhood dinner in the driveway that they have, that we have. <clears throat> anyway, the the family she introduced me to was a large family, and it had these these older elderly twins in them. Elderly, I'd say like they're in their their twenties. Uh, and I thought the names of the twins were kind of in interesting when I was introduced to them. It was uh, Marty and Martin. You would think I, you, if you had twins, you would name them something different because Marty, I believe, is a nickname for Martin. But the twins were Marty and Martin. Anyway, my wife called uh, everybody to eat, so we all got over on the table to sit down and to eat. And then I, I really felt like I ought to pray, so... Uh, I said, well, before we eat, let's pray. So, and then we, and then we pray. And then my dream ended. Now, now, what's so odd about that dream? Well, let me tell you what's so odd about that dream. I don't own a diesel truck. Yet that diesel truck was familiar to me, and I didn't don't have a motorhome, and I didn't live in that house. But the house looked familiar to me, and it, and the idea to get out of the truck and turn off the radio, I think, was purely my idea. And also the idea to pray before we ate, I think, was my idea. And what I think was happening was that I was on what I what I call a uh, Holy Spirit ride along. You know, and we're all as believers connected to the Holy Spirit. So I, my theory on this is that sometimes the Holy Spirit takes us if we're if we're uh, have some success in a particular area, like praying before a meal or, or praying for the sick or things like that. He'll take us for a little ride along to a person, to another believer who's having a weakness in that area and kind of like helping him in some way. Now, I, it's just a theory of mine, but I can't, the thing that I can't understand about this, this thing is when I'm dreaming the dream, <clears throat> you know, like my wife is Sheila in this case, it's like my world and this other guy's world are kind of like crossed up a little bit. So I see like if I saw my daughter, it, it would be Lizzie. But the house was completely unfamiliar to me now. But when I was in my dream, it was familiar. It was like, yeah, I know where the bedrooms are and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's an interesting thing. Uh, I don't know what to do with it. Yeah, you might want to ask to ask the Lord to take you on a Holy Spirit ride along and see what happens. But, so that's it for a rabbit hole. Next week, you can ever go home, jump in jubilee. Whiskey River, take my rind, rhymes with A, B, Rian, flame off, what's in a name, and I'm hooked on a feeling. Thank you, Father, for your spiritual laws that give us confidence in what your will is. Help us to recognize when we're being meatheads and when we're being spiritually minded. Help to teach us to stay in that spiritually minded section so we cannot be double minded. You read about James, and James it talks about being double minded. And if you're double minded, you're not to expect your prayers to be answered. So, what does double minded mean? It doesn't mean that you're in the flesh and then in the spirit and back in the flesh. That's not being double minded, although it is when you're migrating. It means being double minded about a prayer. So, if you pray for something and you ask for it, and you believe you're going to get it, and then you doubt you're going to get it, and then you believe you're going to get it, and then you doubt you're going to get it, then you're not going to get it. So that's what that means. But Teach us to stay spiritually minded and to love on each other. We give you the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.